So here's our breakaway group, the Share the Road rider, Chris Masick on the front, and uh, behind him we've got, uh, is that Alex Meanhorse coming through looking at the front of the breakaway group? It is. Yep. Is he going to go through and take a lap though? Because uh, Masick is doing some big turns there, and here's a board telling us how far we've got to go. Five kilometres to the finish, and the Peloton are honking down behind them, so they better get a wriggle on these guys. Shem Roger behind him, and here we go back to the uh, Peloton. And a rider from Maiko has flicked off the front. Yeah, that's Joe Cooper. And, um, you know, Joe's looking actually really smooth there. And uh, he's he's a guy that's that's had a lot of success. He climbs well. And, um, you know, he's keen to get some results for his, his team there. Big Sam Buley goes to the front of the peloton just to keep the pace on. Got a power net rider behind him. And there's Hayden Rolston sitting in fifth wheel. Just keeping an eye on things. Doesn't want these fellas to get too far away. Now, I can tell you the gap at the moment is about a minute 40. And if Chris Masick hangs on to that gap, he will take the yellow jersey. So they're getting a bit keen on this, called the Stuart boys, because they don't want to give up the jersey. Uh, it'll make things a little bit too complicated for them tomorrow when they've got that big climb of Crown Range. Tiana at a Crown Range tomorrow is going to be a killer stage as we look at Joe Cooper. Yeah, Joe's, Joe's uh, he's out there just in time trial mode at the moment. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's going to be a big ask for him to get up to this break by himself, but uh, he's just seeing if he can chance his arm. Masick still on the front, still powering away. Sam Horgan behind him, then Shem Roger, then Alec Meanho Alex Meanhorst, and at the back, Kieran Hambrook. And, uh, well, I can't believe the amount of work that Chris Masick has done on the front here. I mean, he's just been incredible in his season overseas in Belgium, and he's been incredible here too, the amount of work he's been doing. He is a very, very gutsy bike rider. And these two from, um, from Kia Motors having a little chat, Alex Meanhorse from Auckland, uh, Kieran Hambrook from Nelson, and comparing notes as we head down, and we've got the uh, 50k board, the 80k board as we approach Tiana. So we're not too far away from the finish. So there'll be some sort of talk there. Look, I'll lead you out, and you take the sprint, or something like that. Yeah, well, Chris Masick would have got the word from uh, from the support vehicles that he's he's in with a sniff for the yellow jersey, and uh, that's why he'll be driving it. Um, the two Kia boys, they've got strength in numbers there, and it will be interesting to see what they can pull out of the out of the bag. Um, however, I, you know. I, I'm liking the look of Shem Roger and Paul Wadlin. He's been active during the tour, so you know I'd like to see those guys get a bit of a sniff. Well, here's Joe Cooper, and it's going to be all over for him pretty soon because uh, one of the riders from Pure Black is coming up to shut him down. Another rider from PowerNet behind him. So that's all over. Good effort, Joe, but um, there's too much at stake for Calder Stewart here. They want this t uh, gap to be down by at least another 15 seconds so that uh, Hayden Ralston can retain the Tour Leaders yellow jersey and that was the man with the mullet that just rolled through. Shane Ashbold, Archbold, I beg your pardon. So Chris Masick still in the front, still powering as we head into Tiano and the finish. Yeah, they're coming, the lake. coming down past the lake there, John, the... Uh the Tiano camping ground will be on the right and they'll swing into the uh, into the forefront by the lake and uh, line themselves up for the finish. So one more wipe of the lens and that should take us all the way to the finish. Chris Masick, look how strong he is. Shem Roger, thanks very much Chris. So Chris Masick has decided he's not going to win the stage. He's, he wants the jersey to uh, stir things up for his share the road team and hold on to it to all the way to Crown Range at least. Now back in the peloton, things are powering up here. And here's Clinton Avery powering away on the other side of the road. And he's got a rider there behind him from uh, HGM, I think it is. Haven't seen that rider at the front of the peloton all tour so far. And now these two Kia Motors boys, what can they cook up? Masek saying, come on, come on, let's keep it going. Well, Kieran Hambrook might have been backing himself there too. I see him tightening his uh, shoes. He doesn't want to uh, pull a foot out or anything. But Chris Masick just goes to the front again. He's absolutely drilling it. Yep, he's obviously got the word about that time gap and he wants to make it and he wants that jersey. So past the, uh, is that the camping ground in the background there? Yeah, that's that's um, actually the, that's on the other side of the road and they're just about to swing onto the foreshore road here in Tiano and line themselves up for the finish. Got a narrow shoot there that will take them round onto the uh, waterfront drive here at Tianau, somewhere behind the trees, there they are. And keep an eye on these two Kia blokes, what have they got jacked up? And Hambrook is in the front, he's got uh, Meanhorst on his wheel, 
Meanwhile, Massac is driving this thing. Shemrod is just laying off them. It's uh, they've got about just over a kilometre to go. I, I, there's the one k to go sign in the in the in the distance there. So, it uh, a very sharp turn onto the boulevard where the finish is here. Yeah, this this suits your your uh, you know track riders with this because you've got to set yourself up for this finish. Generally, it's the first or second ride around this uh, around this roundabout and into the final straight. So the likes of Shem Rogers, he'll he'll know about it. He's ridden this tour before, and uh, he'll be looking to do something about and, it. And he's probably figured out what uh, Meanhorst and Hambrook are up to. So he's tucked in behind them, and he'll try and ping off them. Meanwhile, Chris Massick is riding himself into into the ground to try and get the yellow jersey. As we go to the air, and here goes the move, here goes the move, Hambrook around the outside, and straight across Paul Otten, he's going to split them up. So Meanhorst has lost that advantage, but Hambrook's going to lead them out as they gingerly work their way round this sharp corner and up over to the boulevard for the stage finish here in Tianel. Hambrook leads, he's looking around to see where Meanhorst is. Meanhorst is a wheel back behind Paul Otten. Meanhorst goes to the inside of Otten, and Otten's forced to go wide around the outside of Hambrook, and it's going to be Alex Meanhorst who will win the stage. Meanhorst wins... Odlin second and Shem Roger up for third. Was it always the plan for Kieran to lead you out for the victory or was Kieran trying to sprint for himself? Uh, no, we, we were a little bit uh, unsure what the tactic because I was Kieran's quite a good time trialer and we were going to hit them with 1k to go and the plan was that Kieran could make them have to work and then with a bit of cat and mouse because everyone's watching them, each other then I would sit on and hopefully Back, be the backup plan but with Chris working for GC made it difficult because he was just motivated to push the whole way but Kieran and I both have good kicks so we kind of played a little bit by ourselves because the lead out wouldn't do so much and it worked out perfectly. I'm not sure if he got second but uh, either way it was really great. So here are the results thanks to Hunter Furniture. The Kia Motors team in the breakaway managed to make it stick. Alex Meanhorse first, Kieran Hambrook in fourth place. Second place was Paul Odlin, Shem Rodzer in third, and Chris Massick in fifth place. Rolly, if you were one of the other riders in this race, what would you do to try and dislodge you from the leaderboard? I'd race to win the race, not race to make me lose. I think, uh, you know, you've seen today our team was put under quite a bit of pressure. Uh, I was quite relaxed about it. I wasn't too stressed. You know, if I had lost a jersey today, uh, there's still two very big stages to go, and there's also a 13K time trial. So, you know, I think, um, I think the team's... You know, did sort of what I what I would do today. I'd have a crack, but when you go into a block head win, you got to question why they're attacking. Uh, but anyway, that's just New Zealand racing for you, and uh, you live and learn. Um, we know you're strong enough to take the yellow jersey all the way to the end. Is your team strong enough to defend it every day from the beginning to the very end? I said at the start it'd be very tough, uh, especially with the longer stages, and uh, I can't say for sure if um, I'm going to win the race. Still, you know. Uh, for sure I'm the strongest rider in the race, there's no, no two ways about it, but uh, you know, you've got to have a strong team, you've got to have a team that recovers well every day, and uh, this, is hot. this is new to everybody, uh, the longer stages and, and having to back up, uh, but it's not just us who has to back up, you know, uh, it's, the, it's the other teams as well, and um, you know, I think everyone's lucky we haven't had any bad weather yet, it's been pretty good. And with that powerful work in the breakaway, Chris Massick sandwiches himself between Josh Atkins and Hayden Ralston, the leader of the PowerNet Tour of Southland. Scott Little is there in fourth place and Paul Odlin in fifth. No change then in the polka dot jersey. Joe Chapman takes early points and keeps it. Gordon McCauley similarly holds on to the sprint jersey. And there's young Josh Atkins still holding on to his under-23 leader jersey. And of course, our tour leader Hayden Ralston by just six seconds. At the end of 